And here, the MHL booth. Uh, what is this? Um, this is um, our MHL 3.0 technology demo. Um, several features was introduced in MHL 3.0 uh, August last year. First is uh, 4K video support in MHL 3. Uh, the second is um, the ability to support uh, a high-speed data channel simultaneously when video is running at the same time. And third is uh, HDCP 2.2 content protection required for uh, 4K movie playback uh, from Hollywood Studios. So right now, there's already here at MWC the first product release with MHL 3.0. Absolutely. So this phone right here is the Sony Xperia Z2, just introduced from two days ago by Sony. Uh, this phone uh, is the first, the world's first MHL 3.0 4K Ultra HD uh, smartphone. Um, and it's connected to a Sony X uh, XBR 4K DTV. It's uh, fantastic. Yep. So it's a uh, real 4K output in a phone. It's 4K output from a phone. Uh, and what you're seeing now is uh, 4K video stored in a smartphone being played back by the processor outputted to MHL 3.0 supporting HDCP 2.2 content protection connected to the Sony Ultra HD DTV. Fantastic. So can you explain more about this? Uh, what is that? Exactly? Sure. So this is basically on this side represent the smartphone that you just saw over there. So this is a Qualcomm application processor reference phone. Okay, and what it is is it's generating 4K video as an output to our chip, which is our first MHL 3.0 uh, transmitter, and that part number is SII8620. This chip will go into smartphones and will take 4K video directly from the application processor and uh, transcode that to MHL 3.0 output through the connector and the connector connected to a docking board that takes MHL 3.0 in and HDMI out connected to a monitor. Okay, so, um, but in addition to that, um, it is also showing the capability of the high-speed data channel in MHL 3.0. So if you just focus on this docking board again, this is MHL 3.0 input here, and it'll take the, this chip that we have here, it's the 9394, SII9394, will convert the HDMI, uh, MHL video to HDMI video for monitor, but at the same time, you see there's two USB connectors here, okay? Um, these USB 2 connectors are here to support USB data transfer simultaneously through the same MHL3 link back to the mobile device, okay? So I'll show you now. So what are those two USBs? Those two USB connectors are connected, this one, to a keyboard and a mouse. The second USB connector is connected to a USB flash device, a storage device, okay? And what happens now is um, everything right now through USB, the keyboard and mouse is connected through MHL3 to the Qualcomm platform with MHL3.0. And you can see I can use the simultaneous data channel. Uh, if you look at the screen, to navigate through the Qualcomm platform, which is, represents a smartphone. And what I could do is select pretty much the storage drives that is connected uh, through the Qualcomm platform. Now, I'm, ex I'm selecting the extra SD card, which is connected to this flash drive right here. And what I could do, oops. What I could do is go to movies. Okay. Um, now these are all the flash, the movie files. Actually, files that is stored on this flash drive right here. Okay. So what I could do is select a uh, 4K video. Okay. What happens is now once I selected that 4K video, um, the Qualcomm uh, platform essentially is reading this flash device from here through the MHL3 cable back to the Qualcomm platform, the video is now being decoded simultaneously um, by the processor. Video is being generated and output through MHL in the opposite direction to connect to the display. So that means the 4K video goes to the phone? That's right. And then back out. That's right. At the same so, time. So you can, exactly. So you can imagine a phone dock into a cradle connected to a hard drive, 
with a lot of video that you have stored over there. Four terabytes. Four terabytes. And you basically use the phone like a PC. Once you connect the USB drive to it, you can see all the files in the USB drive. You click on it. What the phone will actually do is start reading right, via the MHL3 link, the USB drive movies that's been stored, really back to the processor through MHL 3.0 data channel and play back the video in the opposite direction to connect to a TV. So how much bandwidth are we talking about? Oh, it supports up to 600 megabits of data bandwidth. So there's ample enough for back and forward 4K? Absolutely, absolutely. And that's what we're showing right That's a 4K video uh, stored in the external storage drive and you're playing back video directly from it. How can how can you measure up to 600? Is that like a that's uh, what it was designed for? Like that's it's hard. the optimal, but it could stable three, four, five hundred something. Well, it really depends on the configuration, right? Um, 600 is what we designed for, um, and depending on the uh, subsystem and how it's designed and how many hubs have been connected, um, you know, you might have lower bandwidth, you might have higher bandwidth. It really depends on how it's connected. And uh, so this dock. Mm -hmm. Right there? Yes, looks, that's a, looks really a awesome. Board. So how long time until we can uh, buy those docks, like well, commercially? Well, the silicon is in production today. Uh, we're working with customers already on these uh, designs. Uh, and I would say probably second half this year, you'll see end products supporting that capability. So it'll, it'll be called MHL Docks? What, what kind of... We'll see what happens, what the uh, name well, will be? I, I think the branding itself is really up to the, the uh, device manufacturer. I couldn't say exactly how, how they're going to call this. Because right. right now we have MHL cables. You have MHL yeah. cables. Sure. At, uh, uh, what do you call them, sure. adapters? So this, this will be an MHL dock, yes, absolutely. It's a more advanced adapter with extra uh, ports. Sure, right. A little bit bigger than... Uh, yeah, so it will be an MHL 3 versus MHL 2 type of accessory, right? So That's going to be awesome. Yep. So. Uh, you could have more than just a few USB ports, you can have like four or something, Absolutely, right? right? So, I mean, you can connect a hub to it, you can have as many USB devices that you want. What and more I, could you do? Uh, well, for example, we did the video earlier of a laptop accessory, right? So that laptop today can support HID devices or human interface devices like keyboard, um, touchpad. You can imagine with this MHL3 capability now, you can have a USB port on the side and actually connect that to a USB storage device, a flash device, uh, which allows you to upload content to your phone when it's connected or offload the video that you have captured to an external hard drive, right? So this is very um, complementary to the whole phone as a PC uh, type of usage model, where now you have video and data uh, support on the same single link. So MHL3 is not just a video link, it's actually a video and data connectivity solution, right? And very good for CE, mobile, and now PC applications as well. But how can you get so much data through a small cable like this? I, I don't understand. Well, a, a small cable like this, you know, there's multiple wires in this, right? Is that there's, there's, um, uh, wires that supports um, you know more than six gigabits of bandwidth to support the video. Uh, in as part of those wires, we're able to um, you know, add the data channel into it that goes bi-directional as well. So it's a lot of technology for sure. Uh, but our engineers are pretty smart at silicon image. We're able to you know, but, combine but, all that. But when you talk about video playback, for example, yeah. yep. then it's uncompressed uh, full spec of the video, right? Absolutely. Which is like multiple gigabit. So the raw video, uncompressed video at 4K, uh, 30 frames a second is 6 gigabits per second. 6 gigabits? That's right. So that's also going through? That's right. So when you talk 600 megabits, yes. that's just extra data? That's extra data. Just for USB stuff? Yes, that's for just for data transfers, yeah. Alright. So, cool. Uh, is there uh, uh, MHL3 in the TV? Yes, so if you look at this connection here, Sony phone is connected directly to a uh, Ultra HD TV from Sony as well through a passive cable. Okay, There's no adapters involved, it's just a very inexpensive passive cable between the phone and the DTV. Um, and what's great about this technology is that, uh, as always with MHL, uh, when you're connected uh, between the phone and the TV, the TV always provides power. Uh, back to the phone to charge the phone battery. So if you take a look at the battery sign above on the DTV itself, you can see that that battery is always 100% charged, right? 
um, phones are becoming more powerful, but it's all more, also more power hungry, right? And it's very important when you're connected, the phone is actually being charged and it's not discharging uh, the, the battery itself. Especially when you're playing 4K video. A 4K video or anything at all, right? LTE modem running, graphics running, if you're playing games, that all consumes a lot of battery life. So, uh, how many 4K TVs have MHL3? Well, you know, um, MHL3 was just launched in, October, in August last year. At CES, Samsung announced a, a line of 4K MHL3 TVs. Um, and we now are demonstrating with Sony as well. Um, I can't put the exact number on it, but uh, there's, uh, we're working with all TV manufacturers to enable MHL 3.0, HD 2.2 in their DTVs. These are the, the first two, Samsung and Sony, are the first adopters of MHL 3.0. And we'll see many more brands later this year.